Now, in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some rather strange, odd, and downright disturbing either news or videos that are currently on the internet. Make no mistake about it, people. Make no mistake about it. I have been doing plenty of videos that has to do with all the strange weather we are currently seeing taking place around the world, whether it's earthquakes, tornadoes, these mud explosions, and this very historic rain that is causing these massive floods almost everywhere around the world. Let's not forget this historic drought that's currently taking place in the United States as well. Matter of fact, all across the United States and this drought is causing these wildfires to break out, these very horrific wildfires. A subscriber of mine, Just Loveless on TikTok, tagged me in this video, and this is what's taking place in the mountains of Pennsylvania due to this drought. What really bothers me is that almost all these strange weather events are taking place around the exact same time. But did you know there are locations, areas, villages in the United Kingdom that have not seen sunlight since October? That is right. There are places in the United Kingdom that have not seen the sun since October. And I thought it was crazy hearing that New Jersey has not had rain since September. And yet there are people that have not seen the sun in almost a month. For more than a week now, what's called an anti-cyclonic gloom has meant some places in the UK have had virtually no sunshine. It's been windless, rainless and sunless. Meteorologists say this kind of gloom is unusual, but not unheard of. Usually, by this stage of any normal November, we would have had about a quarter of all of the month's sunshine. This year, we've had 5% of it. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this very rare weather phenomena before, but there is this thing called the anti-cyclonic gloom, and people in the United Kingdom are blaming the anti-cyclonic gloom for the lack of sunshine. Reading this article from The Guardian, which was published on November 8th, an anti-cyclonic gloom has been blamed for cloudy weather across parts of England, with one village receiving absolutely no sunshine since October. Odiham or Odiham, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, in Hampshire, has reportedly recorded zero minutes of sunshine since October, but forecasters are predicting that the fog, drizzle, and low cloud should start clearing from Sunday, which is today. The phenomenon, dubbed an anticyclonic gloom by experts, has led to the United Kingdom experiencing an average of just three hours of sunshine over the past week but fronts moving in from the northwest bringing rain to the west of Scotland throughout Sunday ought to allow a change of air mass across Britain with less cloud. Now look, I've never heard of an anti-cyclonic gloom before. You might have. I've never heard of it before. And I'm sure it's a real weather phenomenon. But news and media, they'll always say that, well, this happened when your peepaw was just a little peepaw. So these things do occur. They're rare but they have occurred over a hundred years ago where nobody alive can verify it today. Now look, I'm not arguing with the fact that an anti-cyclonic gloom has, has or has not happened before in the past. All I'm saying is there are a lot of weather phenomenons currently taking place at one time because I always get those comments where people will say, well, I've been through something like this before. Not everything is a conspiracy theory. And again, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that the entire world seems to be going through some type of bizarre weather. Continuing to read from the article, it says an atmospheric gloom is when high pressure traps a layer of moisture near to the Earth's surface, and that brings a prolonged period of dull and cloudy weather, but with pockets of mist and fog as well. Wild, wild stuff. So that is currently happening in the United Kingdom, while, like I said, other places are dealing with floods, droughts, 
horrific tornadoes, earthquakes, and even snow for the first time. This next video comes from a Ethan Frice on TikTok, and he received a rather interesting letter in a response to his FOIA request for information about Nephilim. This video is rather interesting because of the word choices used in this letter. It's not that the CIA is saying that they don't have information on the Nephilim. It sounds more like they are not going to release information on the Nephilim. And some people forget that even though you submit an FOIA request and spend hundreds of dollars doing so, it doesn't mean that your FOIA request is going to be successful. They can be denied for multiple reasons. So I don't know why the CIA is hiding this info. You guys kept asking for me to do a video on giants. Kind of weird, but I started looking through government databases and there's literally nothing. This guy even asked. He submitted a FOIA request. Don't get bored and scroll away. All a FOIA is is me saying, hey, government, here's 200 bucks. I want info on a certain subject. And then the government will pay someone half the money and they bring you the files. It's that simple. So this guy submitted a FOIA. They took his money and then said no. But it's the way they said no that makes this super suspicious in a way. So they said, and I quote, the records you requested don't constitute agency records subject to a FOIA request, therefore we decline. Uh, basically what that means, it, it, they are saying no, but they're not saying they don't have files. Now why this is weird for one part is wording, but the second part is if they don't have files on something, they'll straight tell you. I read files like this all the time. You try to look up something cool and you're going to find the original FOIA request that started the whole thing. Um, and they'll just say, you know, no, we don't have info. It's common. And don't think these guys didn't research this. They looked for Noah's Ark for years. They they have definitely looked into this a lot. But them saying, you know, the records don't constitute agency records subject to the FOIA is not them saying we don't have files. We already covered that. It's them saying these records specifically are not subject to a FOIA search, so we don't have to give it to you. Now, before you go thinking giants are real, that could just mean there is something that has to do with national security. Like when they were doing satellite scans for giants, maybe they found a military base that wasn't where it was supposed to be. It could just be something kind of boring. There could be more to it. I've also seen them mention we can't do this for national security reasons. So, you know, they really left it up to your imagination. Why I find this video to be rather interesting as well. If you've been subscribed to me for quite some time, you'll know that I made a video about a few months ago where Hillary Clinton under an alias submitted an FOIA request to the CIA for information about Gilgamesh's tomb and the Nephilim. This is actually one of my favorite videos that I created because the timing really does line up and it has to do with the United States military invading Iraq under false pretenses and they were actually there for the tomb of Gilgamesh. What I'll go ahead and do is I'll pin that video to the comment section below and in the description box. It's a fascinating video, but what I want to focus on here is, is this Denitra D. Senegar who connects back to Hillary Clinton and there was a FOIA request for requesting documents pertaining to the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh, the location of his body, and the location of the buried Nephilim. What I also find interesting, and I don't know if many of you have caught on to this, but there were a lot of stories where UFOs or aliens were seen in 2024. We had the Miami Mall alien story. We had these aliens on a Brazilian hilltop. Then we had these aliens crash land in a family's backyard and there were other stories where people were seeing these there were also other news stories where people were seeing these entities that they were describing as 10 foot tall giants whether you believe these stories or not the modern depiction of aliens are generally short gray beings but in all these news stories people are describing these very tall beings always around 10 foot tall this next video we're going to go ahead and look at, I find rather interesting, talking about the Nephilim, talking about these fallen entities. There's a facility known as the Dulce facility where they are doing a lot of very bizarre and strange experiments. Crossbreeding of humans with animals, creating these other entities, and it makes you really wonder, are these entities also being created for the great deception that is coming? In the film that was taken out of the Dulce facility. Yeah. Why would somebody uh, make pictures like this showing the creation of some sort of alien being? And this is a, a facility. This is a facility that's uh, run by the United States government. I mean, with your tax money. Uh, Hamilton talked about uh, the Dulce facility, and I've also heard about you know genetic engineering programs at Area 51. Yeah, there's no question that Dulce exists. Um, you know, I was the one that 
that kind of led the research on that. Uh, I was at a meeting in Crestone, Colorado, and Tom Adams handed me a letter uh, from a lady who lives in Las Vegas, and she was the one that tipped us off that this thing exists. Uh, existed. So I talked to her, and uh, she knew the location of uh, some photos and videotape that had been taken inside Dulce uh, by a guard who escaped during what, what they call the Dulce Wars of 1979. Um, he used to contact her every six months and he said, if I ever miss contacts two in a row uh, for a year, you can go after this box, which they had hidden uh, somewhere here in Nevada that contained uh, six minutes of videotape, 25 black and white photos, and some other documentation about what went on in Dulce. Uh, about two years ago, he did turn up missing. He never, we never heard from him. And I think there was like 12 or 13 attempts after the box, but it had been hidden uh, maybe at least 10 years ago in the terrain and the and the foliage and everything changed i don't think they ever got it out you said on level five you'd walk on by and people would be in cages and screaming and begging for, for help and he was told to i heard that. to walk straight on through and not look or pay attention yeah. these people are all mad i heard that and then um from another source air force engineering source i heard that that when he went there they referred to it as section d and then uh bob heard it referred to when he was up at the test site uh, just once and somebody said uh, mentions something about it being shipped to Dulce but that's the only reference you ever heard to it. Now I call these uh, the guys who are working in the facility as Igor's uh, the invisible government's obedient robotons. But there, it really is a Frankenstein factory. Uh, I think it's all strictly uh, crossbreeding humans with dogs and cattle and uh, all that kind of stuff, and the, you know the stories of Nightmare Hall is um, is true, and that's one of the levels. I think it's the seventh level uh, where they have all the experiments gone wrong, but for one reason or another, they don't want to kill them. Uh, so whoever goes down there, they hear the howling and screaming, and that's where all those terrible stories come from. When I met Cherry, she had seen the seven black and white photos, but not the videotape. The security guard allowed her to make a pencil drawing of the uh, 25 black and white photos, not all of them, but some. And she handed me eight and a half by 11 piece of paper with her pencil drawing of what was in those photos. And I think there were six pages. And those are the ones she asked me to copy in felt tip black, which I did, identical to what she had. And those I released as the Dulce papers and they became the infamous Dulce papers. The Dulce they're talking about is Dulce, New Mexico, and there are a lot of strange things that go down in New Mexico. I often talk about how Jack Parsons, who was Aleister Crowley's disciple, will go with L. Ron Hubbard, Walt Disney, among others, to a desert in New Mexico and practice ritualistic sex magics called the, I believe it was called the Almanathra or something like that, and they would summon these entities. And around the same time they were doing this in the early 40s, while well, there was this rise of UFO activity. The Almanathra was Aleister Crowley's working, but I'm thinking about the Babylon workings where, like I said, a group of these men would go to a desert in New Mexico and they would practice what is known as the Babylon workings. And only a couple years later, there was the Roswell, New Mexico crash, but again, there was just an explosion of sightings of UFOs and aliens. We really don't know what these UFOs are. We believe they're some kind of machinery. And what we're told is that they're some kind of machinery from another world. But they could be entities themselves. They could come from another dimension. They could be a life apparatus for entities. We don't know. But it's just so interesting how all these experiments, all these rituals take place in New Mexico. Make no mistake about it, it's happening all over the world, these experiments and these rituals, but New Mexico definitely has something going on. Talking about experiments, I found a rather interesting video from a individual who I like, who I featured quite often on this channel is Moon Henry, and he notices, just like I'm noticing, there is a rise of UFO and alien talk for a reason. Matter of fact, this month, there is another congressional hearing involving UFOs and aliens. So the government is really pushing the topic hard of UFOs and aliens for a reason, because there is something coming down the line to push this one world government, this one world agenda, the 2030 agenda. And to do so, they have to use this common enemy 
which will be aliens and UFOs, which will be made in the lab. And I think it's going to include a mixture of holograms, AI, and possibly fallen entities, these entities from another dimension that have been working with the government. It will be such a mass deception through multiple means, something that the world has never seen before. And I'm going to go ahead and play Moon Henry's video now. If y'all think things are weird now, you have no idea what's about to happen. We're going to get to the bottom of a lot of things. We're going to call some people in and they're going to point some fingers and they're going to name some names. So I actually warned you guys a few days ago the minute the news broke. Congress themselves will be exposing the alien truth. In their own way, of course. Remember this guy? He'll be there. This, my friends, is an actual play that goes back to this guy who I cannot name and Alistair Crowley. As well as Walt Disney himself. Yeah, it's true. Make sure you go research all these people so you can get what I'm talking about. But wait, there's so much more. Everyone who keeps insisting that these are only demonic spirits are about to learn the hard way. I've been trying to warn y'all for some time with hard data that these are literal biological entities created by the fallen angels to inhabit spirits of demons. They're physical and they can touch you. And abductees will be the first one to tell you we even have real footage, intelligence footage of them. And they're literally right under your feet right now. But wait, it gets even crazier. The new president will be bringing back the World's Fair for the 250th year. What's weird about this? Nikola Tesla had the contract for one of these world fairs. He was raided by Trump's uncle, John G. Trump. And those world fairs cover up the real history of the world. And also the time machine. Don't close your eyes. If y'all think things are weird, now you have no idea what- Moon Henry says something rather interesting at the end. It has to do with this world fair, Nikola Tesla, and Nikola Tesla being raided by Trump's uncle, John G. Trump. Now, I made a rather interesting video about a week ago where I went in detail. It was about a 12 to 15 minute video where I went in detail about how Donald Trump, our current president, or the next president, Donald Trump, is a time traveler. There were a lot of interesting dots that were being connected, yet people were heavily unsubscribing from that video. And the more people unsubscribe from a video, it hurts the video. It, it hurts the video going out there in the algorithm, ultimately hurting the channel. So I had to delete the video. I'll upload the video to another platform. I'm thinking about uploading it to Rumble. But when it comes to this channel, when people find something that's just so far out there, they'll just unsubscribe. But this channel is all about theories. Whether you believe they are real or not, they're just about theories. But sometimes there will be videos where the dots truly do connect. Like I said, I'll try to go ahead and upload that video again soon, perhaps on my Humble page. But when it comes to Project Bluebeam or the false stage alien invasion, we truly don't know what they're going to unleash. It might not just be holograms and AI. It could be their experiments that they have been working on in places like Dulce, New Mexico. Like I said, towards the beginning of the video, multiple people in multiple locations and multiple stories have reported seeing these 10 foot tall beings. These may be the entities that are being experimented on that are created in the lab or brought over from other dimensions and given physical form through robotics. Before anybody says that's impossible, that's impossible, that can't happen. We have to remember CERN has told us that things from higher dimensions, fourth dimensions have been crossing over, which they dub neutrinos or ghosts or specters. We don't know if they're giving these higher dimensional entities, these neutrinos or whatever they call them. Like I said, they call them ghost inspectors, physical form through technology. But again, at the end of the day, this is just a theory of mine. Bill. This last video we're going to look at comes from another content creator I really like. And that content creator, his name is Conscious Juice. And in this video, he's going to talk about how bells, these massive bells, were either destroyed or buried underground for a reason. And it could be perhaps because these bells emit a certain frequency that certain entities do not like. This is a rather interesting thought because we really don't see or hear bells anymore. And I get it, right? We have alarm clocks and other ways to alert us. But it's like these bells were hidden like I said, buried underground or destroyed all altogether. Take a look at this old bell that they just digged up, y'all. This right here is in South Carolina. This bell weighs almost 560 pounds alone. Of course, they had to use one of the Tonka toys in order to dig it out of the earth because no man can 
lift that on its own. But you guys do know what bells were used for, right? You guys do know why we don't see them anymore, right? Why we don't hear them anymore. Remember we used to hear them all the time? Just take a look at all these bells over here. This was in the early 1900s. They gathered almost 170,000 bells all together and they destroyed them. Like over here. When bells are rung, they emit a powerful frequency and vibration that dispel negative energies, which in case promotes healing, health, wealth, abundance, not to mention they ward off negative entities, parasites within you and around you. This is why big bells and certain bells were housed in churches because churches was actually a place that you can go to heal thyself. Do you guys remember Spider-Man and Venom? Look at this scene over here when Spider-Man tries to release the Venom the symbiote, the parasite. Y'all see how he rung the bell? And as soon as he rung the bell, the parasite, the symbiote, which is venom, because it's in his veins, venom, started coming off. And then started finding its way down to Eddie, which is the die, Ed die, Ed die, Eddie Brock, which is death. You see that? And it's the X, X marks the spot. That's where you would stand in order to, to heal yourself. They show you everything in these movies. Look at that. I hope you guys understand where I am getting at. They removed everything that promotes healing within. Because as long as we're not healed within, then the outer world reflects what's the inner world. Which right now, it's a lot of chaos. That is so true. Hollywood likes to show us the truth in plain sight when it comes to a lot of these movies. And we believe they are fiction. But again, they are showing us the truth in and labeling it at the same time as fiction but in any case thank you so much for watching if you like this channel and you want to see more please subscribe if you're already subscribed please like as any engagement does help the channel grow once again thank you so much for your support